What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Tabletop Never Stop. As you can tell, I am not in the Nerd Bunker, and that's because I'm on vacation, but there's ice and fire news, so we gotta talk about it. Some of the CMON employees that lurked in the Facebook group were kind enough to share some upcoming NCUs with us, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today. First off, we have Eldon Estermont. He has Elderly Caution. When Eldon claims a zone on the tactics board, you may replace that zone's effect with draw three taxes cards, place one of those cards at the bottom of your tactics deck, and the rest in your hand. And solid ability for a three point NCU. I like abilities I can use multiple times. You probably won't use this every round of a game, although you certainly could. So you know, getting more tactics cards well, gives us more options. Baratheons want their tactics cards because they're, uh, they're pretty easy to trigger. It'll help them grind out the opponent over prolonged battles. Compared to just vanilla claiming the tactics zone, a little bit more effective for getting us tactics cards because we get a look at three and keep two versus just taking two. We are missing out on that condition token, so if we were looking for that, then it may be better to just claim a tactics spot. But of course, you can't always claim the tactics spot, so now you are you know basically guaranteed to get tactics cards if you want them. I think an opening gambit of taking the tactics spot with a different NCU and then using Elden to get another two tactics cards sounds pretty fun. Then we're starting uh, the game off with seven tactics cards in hand. Once, we, once our units start clashing on the table, that could be pretty good for the Baratheon player. So I feel like the Renly camp can feel pretty good about this guy. And uh, you know, the three cost NCUs are always nice. It allows you to do some fluidity when we're building our lists. And it takes us to Selyse and Shireen, Queen and Princess. A four cost NCU that is loyal to the one true king, Sans Baratheon. This is actually two miniatures on one base, which is a little bit disappointing. But when I first saw them on the box, I thought we were going to get two different managers, but oh well. They have the ability Sacrifice to Flames. NCU has Influence. When it uh, claims a spot on a tactics board, it can attach to a combat unit until the end of the round. While influencing a unit, that unit counts as a Relore unit. Each time that unit attacks, after rolling attack dice, it may suffer D3 wounds to deal the same amount of wounds to the defender. So we have no idea what Relore uh, is going to mean. I would expect Melisandre's tactics cards to affect Relore units and potentially other Stannis characters as well. So really, we'll just put a pin in that. It might be very important, and it might it might not. But I imagine we'll get some use out of this ability to make other units relore units. As far as the ability to risk D3 wounds to deal D3 wounds, this is pretty good uh, situationally. It's not mandatory, and you could do it after you roll attack dice, so you could kind of decide if you think it's necessary. And in scenarios where it looks like we'll be able to reduce the number of ranks a unit has or even eliminate them, and I think it would generally worth taking D3 wounds. The base cost Baratheon unit, the Warden, probably actually a pretty good unit to use this on. Generally, like wounding my high defense units because I you know, I want to force the opponent to try to burn through them. Considering that Wardens are hard to kill, they can probably handle taking a, a wound or two um, and it's not going to allow the opponent to, to blow them up even though they've gotten hit a little bit. If House Baratheon never got access to a four cost unit, or heaven forbid an insignificant one, obviously that'd be a great place to use Selyse and Shireen, but I do think the Wardens um, are a pretty good spot for it. But all the other units that we're seeing so far are pretty high cost, so I wouldn't be wanting to damage those ones. Although, again, it's always worth it to take D3 wounds to like eliminate uh, enemy activation, so definitely situationally super powerful. It's an added gambling component to the game, which I think is actually belongs in, in war games for sure. It doesn't feel that Stannis theme to me. Um, I've always thought of him as a very calculating person, which is, you know, not so much what this is. If we were like Swatch over to Warhammer, this is very a gob very goblin style card we have here. Alright, and that's our those are our spoiled NCU attachments for House Baratheon. Both pretty good. I don't think we need to make a call on, you know, which camp got the better deal here. Both pretty potentially powerful. Like you, I'm waiting excitedly to see what else we get. So hopefully this video was helpful and informative. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.